from the compass to the literal wheel. These are ancient inventions we still use today. Number 9. The Odometer The history of the odometer can be traced all the way back to ancient Greek times. The first mention of a device that measures distance is located in the writings of the Greek and Roman writers Pliny and Strabo. They wrote a significant amount of material about Alexander the Great and his expressed interest in the concept of measuring distance. Back then, people would hire bemetists. A bemetist is someone who would measure distance by simply counting their steps, which sounds boring. A large amount of speculation occurred after the numbers these bemetists recorded were surprisingly accurate. It became obvious that there had to have been some device they used in addition to counting their steps in order to come up with such accurate numbers. While the first known use of the odometer has some evidence, the question regarding who actually invented the odometer and when is under large debate. Some believe that a Roman named Vitruvius invented the odometer sometime between 80 or 15 BC. Others assume that Vitruvius was actually giving credit in his writings to another inventor, in this case Archimedes. If this is true, the date of the odometer's invention would be pushed back even further, all the way to the mid-200s BC. Regardless of the debate, it is generally agreed that the odometer was used in society during ancient Greek and Roman times. Number 8. Paper Today, it is hard to imagine a world without paper. There's something to be said here about limitless paper in a paperless world. Even though society has made a gradual transition into electronic devices in the place of paper, it still has an indispensable place in our world. Numerous businesses would not be able to function without paper. So where did paper even come from initially? In 3000 BC, the ancient Egyptians realized that they needed a way to write down their stories, legends, and history. They handmade a material called papyrus out of the reeds that grew next to the Nile River. The material was called papyrus because the plant it was made out of was called Cyprus papyrus. Over the centuries, civilizations transitioned from papyrus to clay tablets until the Chinese invented a close resemblance of the paper we know today. Of course, the paper we know today is made from trees. So efforts to reduce paper use and waste are underway. Would it be better to go back to making our paper out of the papyrus plant in order to save the trees? But then again, what about the papyrus? Number 7. The Alarm Clock Much like the odometer, the origins of the alarm clock span back to ancient Greek times. Many believe that an ancient Greek engineer named Cebius came up with the first alarm clock. At the time, it was known as the water clock. The water clock was less of an invention and more of an idea. Stebius would drop water pedals on a gong in order to make a noise. The purpose of it was to mark a certain amount of time or wake someone up. Later, Plato tried his hand at inventing an alarm clock by developing a unique way to fill a siphon up with water. When the siphon was almost full, it would make a whistling noise and hopefully would wake up whoever was sleeping. Alarm clocks have come a long way. It's safe to say that without technology, everyone would be oversleeping. Number 6. Arches Today, arches are used in architecture to support the weight of a building's infrastructure. Arches are also considered works of architectural art and are used as monuments. A good example is the St. Louis Arch in St. Louis. But where did arches come from in the first place? While the Romans are credited with inventing the large, sturdy kind of arch that we are aware of today, many cultures before the Roman Empire used arches in smaller ways. These small arches were a lot less sturdy and had limitations on how large a building could be. The civilizations that first used small arches made out of clay and dirt were the Greeks, Babylonians, and Egyptians. The Romans, however, did things a little differently. The Romans made a concoction of lime and volcanic sand, making what we know of today as concrete. Using this concrete-like substance, the Romans were able to make larger arches, thus build larger, sturdier structures. Soon after, nearly every other civilization in the world adopted the new Roman arch. Number 5. Alcoholic Beverages It's difficult to imagine a world without alcohol. Bars, pubs, and breweries are popular spots to catch up with friends, go on tours, and enjoy the general interest most people share when it comes to alcohol. Each category of alcohol houses hundreds of different kinds, even within that category. Beer, wine, bourbon, whiskey, and liquor all cover hundreds of varieties. Since there is so much to choose from, 
How did we get to such a large selection? All evidence that points to how, where, and when alcohol came to be comes from findings of fermented beverage containers and the tools used to make them. Some locations in China, the Middle East, and Greece are littered with fermented drink residue artifacts. While the locations are spread out, many believe that the first alcoholic beverage created was mead, a fermented mixture of honey and water. Mead was widely consumed in Greece and the Middle East. The first ever wine is presumably from China. Traces of a mixture containing fermented grapes, berries, rice, and honey date all the way back to 7000 BC. In the Middle East, wine was consumed with meals often, and the Greeks drank wine for special occasions. In Rome, wine was a large part of the Romans' daily meal time rituals. There is even evidence of an alcoholic beverage made from corn being consumed by Native American civilizations. Many people believe that consuming small amounts of alcohol on a regular basis is actually natural, healthy, and even primal to who we are as beings. In hunter-gatherer times, humans would often eat fermented fruits that fell off trees. Fermented fruits carry different enzymes that fresh fruits don't have, and these enzymes have a positive effect on the brain and the body. Alcohol in small amounts every day has been part of numerous civilizations all over the world. But please, don't forget to drink smart. The Compass before the compass was invented, travelers could only get directions by using the stars and the sun. Objects have been discovered that were possibly used to determine direction. These resemble some sort of crystal that reflected the sun's rays. Overall, traveling a certain direction was tricky back then. The compass was invented in China during the Han Dynasty, sometime between 2 BC and 1 AD. The device was magnetic and its use was intended for fortune telling, not navigation. The first compasses were built with a magnetite mineral called lodestone, which naturally lined up with the Earth's magnetic poles. The Chinese were unaware that they had built a device that would change navigation forever. Some people speculate that the compass wasn't built with any purpose in mind whatsoever, and that it was simply intended for decorative use at first. Different forms of the same Chinese compass have been found in Mexico, so it is possible that Chinese voyagers discovered its navigational capabilities while at sea. Number 3. The Calendar in 45 BCE, Julius Caesar proposed a new, simpler way to determine days, weeks, and months within a single year. Up until then, the most common used calendar was the lunar or Roman calendar. The lunar calendar was based completely off of moon phases. In order to tell what season it was, a group of educated people always had to get together and calculate information like equinoxes. They had to ensure that they were keeping up with the time of year it actually was. At these meetings, a random adding or subtracting of days would happen often. The the lunar calendar was not very accurate and often changed throughout the year. Julius Caesar knew that there had to be a more concrete, consistent way of labeling a full-length year. Caesar's inspiration came from the real mastermind behind his new calendar, an Alexandrian astronomer named Sosigenes. Rather than be based off of moon phases, the new calendar would be based off of something easier to track, the amount of times the Earth revolves around the Sun. It was simpler because every day, without fail, the Sun rises and sets with a long dark period in between. The Julian calendar lasted in many countries until the beginning of the 20th century. It contained too many leap years until it was finally corrected. It also listed some holidays that, since the calendar's creation, have stopped being celebrated. The Gregorian calendar replaced the Julian calendar in 1582 and has been internationally recognized since. Number 2. The Wheel Many history books credit the wheel as being the most important invention in world history. Without it, nearly all technological advancements in everyday domestic work would be utterly impossible. While the wheel is most commonly used for transportation now, it wasn't always that way. It is supposed that the first wheel was invented in Mesopotamia in 3500 BC for pottery. Pottery was a huge part of the culture and income for the Middle East during this time. Fast forward to the end of the same century and ancient civilizations began using them on chariots. This is where people's brains literally started spinning when they thought of all the possible uses of a wheel. The oldest wheel to date was discovered in Ljubljana, Slovenia in the year 2002. After a radiocarbon dating test, the result came back showing that the wheel was at least 5,000 years old. The wheel is wooden and is assumed to have been used as a simple pushcart. A replica is on display at the Ljubljana City Museum in Slovenia. Number 1. Sewers and Sanitation 
Before sewage and sanitation systems existed, unfortunate sights and smells decked the streets of the world. It was very common and most people didn't even think twice about it until sickness and diseases grew rampant. One of the first sewage and sanitation systems was invented in ancient Rome, and it consisted of latrines that emptied out into the rivers in the city. There was no technical flushing. People would use water from Rome's famous aqueducts, and the waste would flush down onto the street and into nearby streams or rivers. Later, the Romans built underground channels for the waste to drain into, so that it stayed off the streets. These underground spaces would be covered up with stones in an effort to keep the smell away. Rome's water supply was so abundant that citizens had no problem hand carrying their waste in a bucket to a designated latrine. Efforts were made to put private sewage systems in every Roman household. Ancient Rome is credited with developing the first recognizable sewage system. Other civilizations had their own way of dealing with things. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.